Have you ever found yourself wondering what if? What if you had made a different decision, taken a different path, or pursued a different dream? It's natural to think about the possibilities of what could have been, but what about the power of if in shaping our present and future? In this sermon, we will explore the transformative potential of if when we surrender it to the ultimate power and wisdom of God. Whether we realize it or not, the word if holds immense power in our lives. It has the potential to inspire and motivate us, but it can also hold us back with regret and fear. We may find ourselves constantly asking what if, and feeling stuck in the past or unsure about the future. But what if we could use this power in a different way? The Bible teaches us that our ultimate hope and security lies not in ourselves, but in the power and wisdom of God. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, we read, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we surrender our ifs to God and trust in His plan and provision for our lives, we can experience a transformative power that surpasses anything we could imagine. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So, what if we embrace the power of if as an opportunity to trust in God's faithfulness and sovereignty? What if we surrendered our doubts and fears to His wisdom and love? As Jesus Himself said in Matthew chapter 19 verse 26, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So, let us discover the transformative power of if when we surrender it to the ultimate power and wisdom of God. Do you know that the decisions you make in life have an impact on your life? If you don't like what is happening, you can choose to change it. In the Bible, we are told to choose which path to follow. We all have the chance to make a difference in the world, but it starts with deciding that we will accept God's blessings when we obey Him. The Bible is not hard to understand, but it can be hard to follow. The Bible tells us that if we obey God, He will bless us and if we don't obey Him, there will be a punishment. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2 the Bible says that if we obey God all these blessings will come upon us. If we do not obey God and follow His commands, bad things will happen to us. Let us look at the Bible today as a mirror so we can see the consequences of our decisions. We all have a responsibility to choose God and be brave enough to live correctly for Him. We are living in a time of hard choices. We have to choose between two paths, one leads to blessings and the other leads to curses. Everything that happens next depends on this choice. Have you ever laid awake at night thinking about the things you should have done differently? Most of the time, we look back on our decisions after they have been made. But we should think about what will happen before we make our choice and know what will come from it. God gives us the opportunity to call on Him for help. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says that it is up to us to be humble and ask God for help in order to heal our land. This kind of healing cannot come from a person running for office, a political party, money from the government, or even a vaccine. The only one who can bring this kind of healing is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God's Word gives us a choice. We can choose to obey or we can choose to disobey. This is the crossroads we are at right now. We have to decide if we will live our lives following God's truth, or if we will live our lives built on lies. To figure out why this happened in our nation, we don't have to blame people or talk about politics, instead, let's look into God's truth like it is a mirror and understand that the reason this happened is because of our own choices. We made a decision to push God out of our lives. We did this in school, government, and even at church. We chose not to follow Him or recognize the truth that He made us. Instead, we have chosen sin and are now facing the consequences of this choice. By denying God and His blessings, we have ignored the truth that doing good will help our nation be successful. We have been trying to fix the problem in a wrong way and not going back to God. Today, we have a choice, obey God and be blessed or disobey Him and suffer from the consequences. It's important to remember that God keeps His promises no matter what, both for those who follow Him and those who don't. We can't choose which parts of His Word we want to follow. That is not what the Bible teaches us. Deuteronomy is a book where Moses talks. He was 120 years old when he wrote it. At that age, people sometimes say what they think without thinking of how it makes other people feel. 
that is probably why Moses speaks so bluntly in Deuteronomy. He knows he won't go to the promised land, and he has spent the past 40 years living with a generation that did not follow God's commands. When we read the Bible, we should remember that the words were said directly and not wrapped up nicely like something from Shakespeare or King James' time. Moses was talking to the children and grandchildren of his generation. He knew it was important, so he spent time explaining what went wrong in the past. Moses reminded them that their fathers worshipped the golden calf instead of God and had not taught them about God's laws. He told them to teach their children about these laws so they could receive God's promise for their lives. He said that they must choose between life and death, blessing or cursing. Moses also talked about how we are given the choice between life and death. Even though this story is thousands of years old, it's still relevant today when we make decisions. He said that they were supposed to travel for 11 days from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea, and it was the 40th year. This means that even though times have changed, the choice between life and death still stands. Moses said this because if we look at the Bible's map, it should have only taken 11 days for the Israelites to get from where they first left Egypt to Kadesh Barnea, which is at the southern end of the Promised Land. But instead, it has taken 40 years. Moses was telling them to listen carefully and not waste his time because he was already 120 years old. He wanted them to understand how important this was. In Genesis chapter 12, God made a promise to Abraham that changed the world. He promised to give him a land full of food and good things. People still remember this promise today. God always keeps his promises. Moses said that it should have been easy to get to the promise of God, but they made it difficult. They could have reached this point a long time ago, but many people didn't believe and that caused an entire generation of millions to be reduced to just a few hundred thousand. The Bible says that if you doubt, you will receive nothing from God. To make him happy, you must have faith and believe in him. Many people don't believe God will provide for them, so they stay stuck in sadness instead of being filled with joy. They don't trust him to forgive their wrongdoings and are scared of what may happen. Remember that if something isn't working out, it's not God's fault, it's yours. Don't blame him for your struggles or pain. If you believe he loves you, he will give you the power, love, and sound mind to get through difficult times. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that God loves us and is on our side. So, no one can be against us. God is the one who made the stars, mountains, and heavens. He is fighting for us, believing in us, and providing for us. He also sent his angels to watch over us too. You don't need to be afraid because God can make a way even when it seems impossible. He will move mountains and part the sea just like he did in the Bible stories. He said no one can hurt you and that he would provide for you. If you go up or down, God is there with you, so no matter where you are, God's hand is on you and his blessings are chasing after you. As a child of God, you have nothing to fear. God is always with you. Even though we struggle with this, the answer is yes, God is for us. We need to decide if we want to obey or disobey. We cannot choose which parts of the rules to follow, we must accept and apply all of them, even if it feels like there are not enough options. Remember that it was not us who created ourselves, we were created by someone else and so we must follow the rule book he wrote for us. In the Bible, there are only two choices, life or death, blessing or curse, obedience or disobedience. We have a hard time understanding this because we live in a world where it is not seen as wrong to disobey God. Peter talked about this in the New Testament, he said that God will still keep his promise of judgment for those who disobey him. We have chosen to ignore God's rules and now we live in chaos. The Bible says that in the end times, people will do bad things. People are now saying, defund the police, which is not a good idea and should stop. We have forgotten about God's love, which means our world has become filled with hate. To fix this, we need to remember God again, the one God who loves us and sacrificed himself for us, who cleanses all our wrongs. We must follow his instructions for living life the right way. Jesus is the only one we can choose. He sits on his throne and is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We often ask questions like when will life be better, when will God move, or when will revival come? God in heaven might be asking us the same thing, when will you come back to me? 
When will you call upon me? When will you humble yourself and ask for help? Instead of focusing on other people, why not focus on the King of Kings instead? Stop complaining and start praying. Have faith that what you believe in is true, then act like it. Don't just ask God to make a change, be the one who makes the change. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 14 list many blessings that will come if you do this. You'll be blessed in your home, when you go out, and when you come back. You will have more money than you need and won't need to borrow from anyone. People all over the world will recognize your goodness and mercy if they try to harm you in any way, God will give them seven times worse punishment as his reward for doing good. But from verse 15 to 68 there are consequences for not following God's plan. God tells us that there are consequences for not following his instructions. He takes away the blessings he would have given us. For example, if we disobey God, we will be cursed in the city and in the fields. We can see what is going on in the world today and wonder what we can do about it. The answer is that when we come together in unity and call on Jesus' name, our collective power is much stronger than any government force because God's authority is greater than anything else. Jesus said that whatever we do on earth, he will do in heaven. We can't bring people back to life or make the blind see, but he did. So, all we have to do is choose who we will serve, God or someone else. If you choose God and obey him, you will be blessed. If you choose to live life on your own and do what you want, know that the Bible says this is a curse. You alone are not enough to provide for yourself, heal yourself, or protect yourself. But God can do all of these things and more. So, decide today who you will serve. God knows what we need even before we ask. He wants us to have faith and turn to Him for help. Today, in Jesus' name, we pray for everyone in this world who are asking God for help. We also pray that God will heal our land and show His power so that everyone will know He is King above all kings and Lord above all lords. As we call on God in faith today, we trust that He will answer every prayer far beyond what we can imagine or ask. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more Word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.